Welcome to my class on quantum mechanics for the semester 4. We had been studying de Broglie hypothesis, the association of waves with moving particles which were called as the matter waves and uh, what kind of waves actually matter waves. Normally we know that a wave associated with a water actually represents the ups and downs of the surface of the water. If it is a sound wave, then it actually represents the pressure uh, of the air, compression and rarefaction. If it is an electromagnetic wave, then it actually deals with the variation of the electric and magnetic fields. Here, in the case of matter waves, if we talk about matter waves, then these are the waves which are actually the waves of probability. So, matter waves deals with waves of probability. Now, normally if you think about a wave, then it is an harmonic, it is a harmonic wave. But here we are going to deal with wave packets and to get an idea about the wave packet, I have drawn a picture of superposition of two waves which are preferably of the same amplitude but with slightly differing frequency. Here we have two waves and this wave if you add them up, if you superpose them then you actually get a wave which actually represents a matter wave. So if you superpose these two waves pictorially then it would be something like uh, this. And you can see that here it would grow again and it would again grow here and then it would decay down because the crest overlap the trough and then it would grow again. Okay. So this is a kind of waves which is actually associated with uh, waves, de Broglie waves, the waves which are associated with waves of uh, um, matter waves. Okay. Now, uh, if we really want to do the mathematics of this, then this is very simple. Y1, if you call this as Y1 and this as Y2 and this as Y, then Y1 can be assumed as a cos of omega t minus kx y2 to be equal to again some amplitude same amplitude omega plus delta omega with slightly altering frequency k plus delta k into x and the superposition y1 plus y2 if you add up cos of alpha plus beta you know that the relation is something like 2a cos or 2 of cos of alpha plus beta by 2 and cos of alpha minus beta by 2. So if we add them up then this would be 2a cos of omega t minus kx if we assume that delta omega and delta k are very small in amplitude, very small in magnitude in comparison to omega and k. So we can neglect that and we can write this and along with that there would be a delta omega uh, by 2 into t minus delta k into x because delta k by 2 into x. So we can see that there is a uh, uh, there are basically two components of the resultant wave as we have seen from our uh, 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 from the picture also this can be seen there is a phase part which varies very fast the phase part is given by the velocity vp which is equal to omega by k this part is going to give you this and then there is a group wave also associated with it and the group part is given by Vg which is equal to delta omega by delta k. The speed 
of the group wave is given by and in the limit delta k tending to 0 uh, for very small variation this uh, group velocity can be written as d omega dk. Now let us try to see what this phase velocity and the group velocity of the wave associated with matter of moving particle the de Broglie wave what actually this phase velocity and group velocity actually represent for that we need to introduce the Planck's law which we have already learned and the de Broglie hypothesis so let us talk about that now uh, uh, phase velocity can be written uh, omega is nothing but 2 pi nu which is equal to 2 pi into nu is nothing but according to Planck's law E is equal to h nu which is equal to mc square so uh, we can say that uh, uh, nu is mc square by h okay and uh, um, uh, k which is equal to 2 pi by lambda which again this is Planck's law Planck's law okay and de Broglie hypothesis is given by lambda is equal to h by p which is equal to h by m of v the velocity of the particle so one can write 2 pi uh, by h into mv okay so uh, obviously the phase velocity uh, is given by omega by k and if you uh, substitute this Planck's law and de Broglie hypothesis then this becomes c square by v okay now velocity of the particle is much much less than c for any particle so the phase velocity is going to exceed c we can say vp into v is uh, equal to c square now if we want to have an idea about the group velocity which is equal to d omega dk now omega and k both are function of velocity i should write this mass as the moving mass actually this should be equal to gamma mv and gamma mc square where gamma is a factor uh, given by 1 by root over of 1 minus v square by c square the relativistic factor then I can always write vg to be equal to d omega dv divided by dk dv so d omega dv uh, so if omega is uh, 2 pi mc square by h into root over of 1 minus v square by c square and k is equal to 2 pi mv by h root over of 1 minus v square by c square then one can write this to be d omega dv would be equal to 2 pi mc square by h into minus of half 1 minus v square by c square to the power 3 by 2 into minus of 2v by c square which minus minus cancels 2 to cancels so this is going to give us um, 2 pi m c square c square cancel out so 2 pi m v okay and uh, divided by h into 1 minus v square by c square to the power 3 by 2 similarly if one wants to calculate dk by dv that can also be done so this would be equal to 2 pi m uh, divided by h 1 minus v square by c square to the power half and plus 2 pi m v divided by h and minus of half into again minus of 2v by c square into 1 minus v square by c square whole to the power 3 by 2 which gives us um, this minus minus again cancels out 2 2 cancels out and then we have a v square by c square so this if we take into account 2 pi a common h into 1 minus v square by c square to the power half then it would be equal to 1 
and uh, plus uh, 1 by 1 minus v square by c square which amounts to <coughs> uh, oh there is a numerator also v square by c square okay so this is going to give us 2 pi m by h uh, and uh, 1 minus v square by, so this is going to give us 1 minus v square by c square to the power 3 by 2 because this 1 minus v square by c square and this cancels out and we are left with this so basically if one calculates this d omega dv is twice pi m v uh, by h 1 minus v square by c square to the power 3 by 2 and this is going to give us twice pi m by h into 1 minus v square by c square 3 by 2 so this is nothing but equal to v v is the particle velocity and that actually represents the velocity of the group wave so we can say that the wave group the velocity with which the wave group is traveling is actually the velocity of the particle is the same as the velocity of the particle. So the particle moving with a velocity v and the, if a wave is associated with it which is the de Broglie wave then the velocity of the group wave would be exactly equal to the velocity of the group wave that can be very easily proved. So we can say that this v is nothing but the group velocity and the phase velocity is equal to c square by vg because just now we have proven that vg is v so we can say that vg into vp is equal to c square okay so one actually have this relation which can be arrived at by doing this simple mathematics. Let us try to uh, associate a wave function because a wave is associated with a moving particle and we want to deal with the wave associated with a moving particle. So we can define a wave function which is given by Max Born the interpretation of the wave function can be um, directly arrived at from the Max Born's interpretation. Actually, he represented the wave function as wave function as psi. Okay, and this psi is nothing but it actually physically represents the probability amplitude of finding a particle at any point of time at any particular location. So this psi is a function of x, y, z and t. Okay. Now this probability amplitude could be positive as well as negative. This could go above this could be a positive value or this could be a negative value and this probability interpretation sounds bad because you cannot have negative probability so it is not physically measurable what is physically measurable is the <coughs> probability density so we always define a probability density which is psi star psi actually psi is complex in nature it's a complex number so we have to multiply psi with its complex conjugate which actually is defined as mod of psi square and this is defined as the probability density now this is something which is always positive and uh, we have no problem in measuring this this can be physically measurable this is something which is a physically observable quantity so this actually represents the probability density this that is the physical interpretation of psi one can normalize this 
wave function one can write psi star psi integrated over the whole volume d tau minus uh, okay uh, over all uh, 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 all the space to be equal to 1 which is the statistical interpretation of probability that the total probability must be equated to 1 and uh, we can normalize it if you want to write it for one dimension you can even write psi star psi x dx from minus infinity to plus infinity and you can normalize this is the normalization condition okay this and these are the normalization condition the psi square is actually normalized the psi star psi is actually normalized okay we would again come back to this uh, uh, wave function later on but right now let us try to uh, uh, pictureize the the superposition of psi if you have two or more psi then how would they superpose that is what we will try to understand and for that we have an interesting experiment which uh, uh, is basically a double slit experiment double slit thought experiment of uh, of bullets of electrons of photons and then you can understand how this shy must superpose let us try to see a two slit experiment Suppose we have a two slit experiment. This two slit experiment, you can think this two slit as two holes, and uh, you can uh, actually pictureize this as the same as that of Young's double slit experiment. We can do the same experiment with a bullet with bullets as was explained by Feynman in his volume 3 book let us first of all think of a gun okay a bad gun which actually uh, have bullets which can go in this fashion this fashion and this fashion and we have two slits slit s1 and slit s2 and then we have a wooden wall and uh, suppose I cover the slit S2, then what would be the number of bullets which are embedded in this wooden wall? Then if I plot the number of bullets, then it would be something like this. So suppose we close the slit S2 and S1 remains open, then you have the number of the bullets to get embedded on the wooden wall would, would show a number with respect to the distance as this. In the same fashion, if you do the same thing with slit S2 closed, S1 closed and S2 open, then you would again get a distribution like this. And if you simultaneously open this two, then they should give us a superposition of these two as this we should get the number of the bullets which are embedded overall while s1 and s2 open to be like this but the things change if you replace this bullet by photons okay so suppose you have photons here photons means a light source a light source which actually emits light you have wave fronts so if you replace this with photons then again you can define this as with one of the slit closed you can always define the intensity pattern but now we don't have this kind of pattern rather we have <coughs> interference and diffraction phenomena to take place and we have a pattern like this which gives alternate dark and bright bands in the case of photons that is the result of Young's double slit experiment 
<coughs> now if we want to replace this photons with electrons what would happen now if you have electrons which are actually material particles and since we are taking electrons you have an electron gun electron gun which can be heated by a filament with a high voltage source and then the electron gun electrons are being ejected from this point and then if you close this slit S2 since this is again a material particle like bullets for one if you close the slit S2 again for slit one you should get a pattern like this okay we call that as shy one okay and similarly if you close the this is for this to be closed and now if I open this and close this one then I again get another pattern like this the intensity or the amplitude of the number of the electrons which are hitting this uh, phosphorescent screen this is not a wooden screen anymore this is a phosphorescent screen which can detect electrons then I get shy 2 now the if I now open both the slits simultaneously what would happen the resultant would be basically a superposition of the two a1 shy 1 plus a2 shy 2 and uh, the resultant won't be like a classical bullet uh, uh, or a particle the resultant would be something like alternate dark and bright band and it would be like this the reason being shy which is the probability amplitude if i say that shy uh, uh, for the for one slit for s2 closed for s2 closed we have uh, the resultant intensity to be only proportional to shy 1 square for s1 closed we have the resultant intensity to be proportional to only shy 2 square but for both open for both s1 and s2 open the resultant intensity would be proportional to psi square which is nothing but proportional to psi 1 plus psi 2 whole square okay it's it's psi which is a linear combination of the two and so we this is not only proportional to psi 1 square and not only proportional to psi 2 square but there are terms like psi 1 star psi 2 plus psi 1 psi 2 star these two are actually giving rise to that alternate dark or alternate less intense and more intense region where more number of electrons and less these are the less number of electrons and these are the region of more number of electrons so it is something uh, which arises because shy itself is a complex number and shy actually adds up like a linear one so here from here we can interpret something about the nature of the wave equation which is as follows the wave equation must be a linear one because the solution of the wave function which is shy is a linear combination of the individual components individual contributions individual slit contributions or individual wave function contribution so that is what we can interpret or that is what we can infer from this experiment that the wave equation must be a linear one if it is a if it is to obey or if it is to agree with this experiment with this double slit experiment okay
let us now talk about something about the uncertainty principle we talk about a gamma ray microscope and after that we would actually uh, go on to the the wave equation uh, but before that let me finally talk about the position measurement using gamma ray microscope how can one actually measure the position uh, of a particle of a quantum mechanical particle using a gamma ray microscope now what is a gamma ray microscope this experiment is called a thought experiment because it is impossible to actually focus gamma ray with some kind of optical lens but still we want to actually track a particle by using a set of gamma rays these are the gamma rays which are actually uh, being uh, incident on a particle these are the gamma rays okay and uh, they are they are being scattered so that they can uh, get focused with in this particular region within this small region so as to um, <coughs> within this lens so that we can actually see the particle which is somewhere here okay so uh, according to the laws of optics we know that uh, the position measurement is or the position can be resolved if you have the uncertainty in position to be of the order of uh, the smallest distance which can be resolved by using this microscope if i call that as delta x then that would be equal to lambda by twice n sin of the angle subtended by the rays uh, into the lens where n is the refractive index of the medium and uh, if for air or vacuum n is equal to 1 so delta x is if lambda be the wavelength associated with the gamma rays then lambda by 2 sin theta actually gives us the the position which the minimum value of the position which can be resolved okay. now what is the value of the momentum uh, uh, which lie while uh, measuring the position we can say that if the momentum associated with this is h nu by c then the component of the momentum along this would be equal to h nu by c sin theta and the component of the momentum along this is minus of h nu by c sin theta so we can say that the momentum which can be resolved along this is equal to h nu by c sin theta minus of minus h nu by c uh, uh, sin theta which gives us 2 h nu by c sin theta which can be called as 2 h by lambda because c by nu is uh, lambda so <coughs> if we substitute the value of the lambda from here lambda by 2 sin theta then we can say that delta x is equal to h uh, uh, by uh, delta px okay. so that gives us an idea about the uncertainty principle which is of the order of the the minimum distance which can be resolved and the corresponding momentum which can be resolved simultaneously is of the order of h or h cross now uh, there are other forms of uh, um, uncertainty principle which can be arrived at if you uh, uh, want uh, they, they can also be done but what is more important is uh, to know that it is impossible to precisely 
define the position and the momentum simultaneously and what is the measure of imprecision of the position and the momentum that is of the order of h more precisely the exact relation is something like delta x into delta px is greater than or equal to h cross by 2 this is the exact relation for uncertainty principle which can be arrived at mathematically also if you think about the Fourier transform of different functions from there also you can mathematically arrive at this particular expression I hope this will uh, 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 more or less justify uh, as the basis for development of the wave equation which would be given in your next class. Thank you.